Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, yes. I request you all to mute yourselves so that you'll be able to hear the class properly and okay. there'll not be a problem at all. Right? Okay. Thank you. Right. So, we'll go ahead with the second chapter for today. That is the protozoans. Uh, we are going to see their general characteristics, their classification. We are going to have a type study that is of Elphidium and the different kinds of protozoan diseases that are there. There are around four diseases. So we'll just have a look into them. So when you come to the uh, protozoans, you're going to see their important characteristics, the small, minute organisms, as we have already re read about them in the last chapter, even they can come under the phylum protista, or uh, as such, you know, they're completely different and, you know, they're an independent entity altogether. So in that ca case, the important characteristics, the classification up to class level only we are going to see. And then also we're going to see certain protozoans as an example. We are going to see the structure, physiology, the life cycle. You, so there's an alternation of generations in uh, a, an organism which is known as Elphidium. We are going to see that. And then we're going to see the structure, life cycles, the pathogenicity and the control measures for uh, diseases uh, that is Kalazar, uh, Amoebiasis, Malaria and Trypanosomiasis. So these are the four diseases. We'll just have a peek into or look into it. So when it comes to the uh, protozoans, they're the most primitive forms that were present. Proto, that is meaning first, zoon, zoon which is uh, animal. And this term protozoa was actually coined by a scientist by uh, the name Goldfuss. And protos, as I told you, it's a Greek term, basically. Proto means first, zoon means animal. <clears throat> Today, we know that there are around 50,000 uh, types of protozoan species that are present. They're cosmopolitan in nature, that is, they're present all over the world. And one prerequisite for this protozoans to live thoroughly or, you know, to live uh, comfortably is that they need moisture. And majority of them are like solitary. They live alone or some of them are colonial. That is, they live in uh, small bunches of colonies. And uh, most of them are parasitic in nature. They are either, you know, found in whole humans or in another other vertebrates for that matter. And the most important human, uh, like, you know, organisms for the human, uh, uh, like, you know, in relation to human beings is um, the Leishmania donovani. It's a protozoan. It causes the disease called as Kalazar or visceral. Leishmaniasis. Then you have Entomoeba histolytica, which is a well-known human parasite. This causes amoebic dysentery. And then you have Plasmodium vivax. Nobody needs an introduction regarding malaria. So Plasmodium vivax is a protozoan which causes malaria. Now you have to get a doubt. It is the mosquitoes that cause malaria, right? Why am I talking about a protozoan over here? But there. That is where, you know, the story lies. You know, it is malaria is caused by Plasmodium vivax, which lives in mosquitoes, especially the female mosquitoes, which have got the, uh, like, you know, piercing and sucking type of mouths, in fact. So those come and those female mosquitoes come, bite the human beings, and that is how we get malaria. So the causative organism is Plasmodium vivax. But then it is, uh, the vector is the mosquito. So, and yes, you have everybody. Mommy oh, is teaching you very... So, and then you have Trypanosoma gambiense or Trypanosoma. It is a hemoflagellate. It causes a sleeping sickness. So, it goes into the cerebrospinal fluid also. So we'll come to it in some time. In fact, you know, maybe hopefully within this hour itself, I'll try to finish this lesson. So yes, it causes uh, sleeping sickness and it lives in the blood, the lymph and the tissues of all the vertebrates. So when it comes to the general characteristics of uh, the protozoans, small, microscopic, colorless forms. Some of, the, some of them are colored. Then what do you call it? Uh, a uh, few of them are quite large enough uh, for you, you know, which are visible to the naked eye. So some of the animals are like, you know, they are either free living or they are parasitic in uh, uh, in their existence. 
body structure is that they are either unicellular or they only have a single cell and all the functions are performed only by the single cell then body symmetry is uh, either bilateral or spherical or it does not have a symmetry at all as in the case of amoeba body is naked that is if there is no plasma membrane which is covering it and is, uh, that is in the case of some protozoans some others have a thick rigid pellicle others have a pellicle which is calcareous or uh, siliceous shell is also present now body consists of a mass of protoplasm which is differentiated into a single nucleus or many nuclei and this nucleus can either be in the form of an uh, and you know you have the protoplasm in the form of ectoplasm and endoplasm now functions of locomotion any organism for that matter if it stays in the same place food is a problem So locomotion is a big, uh, like you know, a, a, a factor which actually helps in the food basically. So locomotion and feeding are performed by pseudopodia, which are finger-like or whip-like flagella or hair-like cilia. Nutrition is varied in animals. They can be holozoic nutrition, that is ingestion, and then uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> and then uh, please I request you all to mute yourselves. so nutrition is varied in all these uh, animals it can be holozoic holophytic saprophytic parasitic or mixotropic that is one or two modes of nutrition together so for, for example holozoic and parasitic uh, nutrition together that's known as mixotrophic anyway and the digestion is intracellular so in that same cell all of this digestion is also taking place basically and uh, this is especially in the food vacuoles no specific organelles are present for respiration or excretion all of these functions is by diffusion by the body surface now there is one particular factor called as osmoregulation this takes place in the fresh water forms that are present through a contractile vacuole this also serves the excretory purpose reproduction is by both asexual and sexual methods and sex asexual uh, reproduction is by binary fission or multiple fission or by budding sexual reproduction is by conjugation and again in many forms of the protozoans there is an alternation of generations and uh, encystment is one particular form wherein the amoeba it uh, releases it's uh, like you know it forms a cyst like uh, like you know it gets into the cyst like form there's a cyst formation and this is uh, usually done to tide over the uh, what do you call it uh, unfavorable conditions excuse me right now when it comes to classifying the protozoans your book has one particular method of classifying them whereas what you see in the internet there's a slight difference in the classification so anyway so keeping this in view what i'm going to do is just follow with your textbook whatever is given over there basically so when it comes to classifying them it was uh, classification was introduced by hyman in the year 1940 and this classification is based on the different kinds of or the modes of locomotion and how the uh, pattern of reproduction is whether it is asexual or whether it is sexual basically so phylum protozoa is divided into two subphyla one is plasmodroma and ciliophora subphylum plasmodroma is divided into four classes that is um sarcodina mastigophora opalinata and sporozoans and uh, whereas uh, what do you call it uh, class subphylum ciliophora has only one class which is uh, ciliata 
I'll share my screen with you. Uh, there is a PPT that I just, you know, could try to put in. But the thing is, um, uh, it's not exactly according to what, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> It is just for your, uh, uh, let me just play it for you if possible. Anyway, let's just get uh, with it. Um, excuse me, I'll just come in a minute. The battery saver is on, so we'll switch the phone. Right. So I hope you're all able to see the screen. This is just for your uh, perusal. That is, you know, just for you to see. It's not uh, like, you know, in the same order as I am teaching. So let us just try to, uh, I'll try to teach at the same time. Uh, you know, you can just have a look at the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the PowerPoint that's going on, but they are slightly independent of each other. So when it comes to class Mastigo Fura, Mastic means, or foros means bearings. Flagella, so flagra means whip. So these are uh, whip-like, uh, uh, like, you know, having a whip-like flagella for that matter. And they can be uh, free-living, they can be parasitic in nature. And they usually have flagella as the locomotory organelle. And the free-living uh, protozoans of this class are found in freshwater. They're found in seawater as well as the moist soils. And the parasitic forms with the flagella itself, they're found in the human beings or the host animals, tissues, basically. So body again has a definite shape. It's covered with a thin, firm pellicle or test, which is made up of material that is cellulose or chitin or silica particles. And animals in this class, organisms in this class have more than one flagella. And that is used for locomotion as well as to capture food. And they have a monomorphic, means only one nucleus. And nutrition is holophytic, which is autotrophic. It can prepare its own food. Example is euglena. Holozoic or heterotrophic. So it can prepare own food. It can take food from outside also. Saprozoic or mix mixotrophic means the food is uh, either uh, taken as uh, nutri only sing uh, like, you know, nutrition from the other, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, other sources per se. So this is page number 12. And uh, I'm talking about class Mastigophora for the people who have joined just now. All right. So anyway, so in this class Mastigophora, you get to see that there is, there is a sexual reproduction also taking place. And this is by Syndamy. So when it comes to the general characteristics, like I already told you, they are unicellular or uh, they are colonial. Reproduction is by binary fission, budding, multiple, multiple fission or schizogony, sexual reproduction. So this is the kind of budding that can take place. And this is euglena. This is trypanosoma, r cellar, different kinds of budding that is, uh, or different kinds of reproduction that is being shown. And food is by either, uh, like, you know, that is, there is a symbiosis, which is an intimate association between the two organisms that is there. There is parasitism, whereas, you know, one organism, mostly this protozoan lives inside the second organism. This is known as the host. Host is harmed, but usually survived. No, but not in some cases. African sleeping sickness, the host, which is usually the human being or a vertebrate, dies. Uh, then there is commensalism. One organism benefits, another organism benefits uh, or uh, is not exactly benefited, nor is it harmed as such. Mutualism is wherein, you know, you both the organisms, wherein the host, uh, when the organism is there inside the host, both the organisms, the host as well as the uh, like, you know, other organism which is there, both of them are benefited with this kind of association. 
So when it comes to the protozoa, see that's what here we have read it as. Uh, we have uh, the phylum protozoa, subphylum plasmodroma and ciliophora, but this kind of discrepancy is there for us. Phylum sarcomastigophora, phylum epicomplexa, phylum ciliophora, but these are known as subphylum in our class. So we just like, you know, have to have this kind of clarity. Let's follow the book. And this is the Euglena example that is being given. And then, you know, you have a... Uh, 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 so, and then this is the phylum, uh, like, you know, or the class Sarcomastigophora, autotrophic, saprozoic, uh, or heterotrophic, single type of nucleus, asexual, reprodu uh, like, you know, sexual reproduction is seen by syngamy. And this is the locomotion by the locomotory single or uh, two fire flagellae maximum. And then this is the subphylum Mastigophora. You can see that is locomotion is by one or more flagellae for that matter. This is the trypanosomia and it can uh, exist either solitarily or in colonies. And this is the biggest, uh, like, you know, the single flagellum, which is like whip-like different organelles present inside the single cell of, uh, like, you know, uh, euglena, for example. Uh, so because this has got chloroplasts and paramyelon bodies, I'm calling it as euglena, in fact. So this is subphylum sarcodina. We'll come to this now. Anyway, when it comes to the examples of uh, subphylum or like, you know, uh, class uh, sarcomastigophora, around 2000 species have been identified. There are two subclasses based on the mode of nutrition. One is Phystomastigaina. Example is Euglena and the other autotrophic animals. And then you have Zoomastigaina, wherein example is Mastigamoeba and other holozoic animals. So when it comes to class Sarcodina, class Sarcodina, you have usually they are found in freshwater, uh, seawater or in moist soils. Majority of them are free living, but some of them lead a parasitic life and then their body is naked. So some animals have a test or a shell around the body, but a firm pellicle is absent and all the animals in this class have pseudopodia. That is used for locomotion and food capture. Flagella can be present during some parts of the life cycle or life history. And nutrition is mostly holozoic in nature. That is or, uh, like, you know, what do you call it? Uh, heterotrophic in nature. That is uh, ingestion and then digestion taking place. And then asexual reproduction occurs in this by binary fission, multiple fission, spore formation and budding. Now, sexual reproduction also occurs by syngamy, wherein the gametes become equal and then, you know, there is a fusion of the gametes. Now, almost 8,000 species of this, uh, like what do you call it, uh, class Sarcodina have been identified. Again, it is divided into two subclasses. One is Rhizopoda and the other is Actipnopoda and there are quite a lot of orders as well. Now, the examples, most famous examples of this particular uh, class Sarcodina are amoeba, entamoeba, different species again. R cell is there. Then you have Elphidium. Then you have uh, Polystomella. Elphidium. What is um? What is an amoeba? So. So that's what amoeba, entamoeba, arcella, elphidium, or polystomella, all of these belong to the subphylum sarcodina. <laughs> now, again, the body, if you see the picture that is given in your textbook, if all of you have your textbook in front of you, you can see that the first picture is amoeba. Over here also, just in the PowerPoint, you can just see. And, you, and then uh, you have the entamoeba also. And uh, <clears throat> then you have polystomella or uh, which is known as uh, Elphidium. We are going to, you know, have a look into it a, a little while later. So you have a contractile vacuole, you have a nucleus food vacuole, and uh, Entamoeba histolytica is present as a parasite. So you have food vacuole with RBCs in it. Uh, then you have shell chambers, as in the case of Elphidium. And then you have a proloculum. We are going to come to it in a little while. Now, having said that, we are going to like uh, have a look at uh, the next one is class opalinata. Before that, what are pseudopodia? It is a 
temporary cell extension which is used for movement or locomotion and for gathering the food and there are different types of pseudopodia they include the lobopodia phyllopodia reticulopodia axopodia lobopodia has like broad extensions so what happens is they are uh, these pseudopodia form and they are quite broad in nature as such it's not narrow this is used for locomotion and for engulfing food phyllopodia is like you know uh, there's a streaming which helps in de delivering the food so all these are different kinds of uh, again i would have to tell that it is a cytoplasm that is ecto and endoplasm which is used for the uh, like what locomotion of food gathering basically uh, that uh, so all these are uh, uh, the conversion of the ecto to endoplasm and this helps in the locomotion or gathering the food or the formation of a pseudopodium so uh, you have reticulopodia and axopodia as well so this is the uh, picture of amoeba as you have already seen belongs to class sarcodina there's a contractor vacuole this is the pseudopodia extension of the ecto and the endoplasm this is the plasma membrane or the plasma lemma as you know this is the nucleus the nucleolus contractile vacuole the food vacuoles and the cytoplasm with the basic mitochondria now when it comes to class opalinata they are all endoparasitic in nature and uh, they are found in the rectum of cold blooded vertebrates frogs toads etc body is completely uniformly ciliated and there is a saprophytic or a saprozoic mode of nutrition and this occurs that is they transport the nutrients from the surrounding medium into the cell so only the nutrients is absorbed or uh, like you know it is taken in as a juice into the cell they have two or more nuclei asexual reproduction is by binary fission sexual reproduction is by uh, gamete formation there is also a phenomenon wherein they undergo encystment especially during the breeding season of the host so when the host is undergoing a breeding season there is no point in it trying to survive so what they do is they undergo encystment so example is opalina you have even one more example if i'm not wrong it is zellerella so these two belong to class opalinata and the next one is sporozoans now sporozoans this class consists of all the internal parasites they are parasites in vertebrates arthropods in worms in mollusks their body has a thick pellicle and other uh, then do you know there are locomotory organelles cytosomes vacuoles which are completely absent nutrition in this class is by saprozoic method but it, it can also be solozoic holozoic in nature and asexual reproduction is by multiple fission sexual reproduction is by uh, spore formation and syngamy and there are infective stages of uh, the these particular uh, what do you call it uh, spores that are formed and uh, this infective stages wherein it goes and infects other host or other vector is known as the sporozoid form this life cycle forms or shows alternations of generation and there are almost 2000 species of this class sporozoans which are known locomotion motion organs are absent how locomotion takes place man i mean you know see since there are different kinds of when it is parasitic in nature when it is when inside or within the host it is absent we will come to that because we have a, a few see we have this plasmodium which is going to like you know which we are going to see basically so when we come to that part we will learn since these are exclusively parasitic in nature and at the same time the infective sporozoid formation is there so you don't exactly need locomotory organelles because that locomotion is performed by the vector and they are present in the blood stream they are present in uh, what do you call it uh, the lymph so what happens is there is constant circulation so with that what is happening is they need not per se have a locomotory organelle the locomotion for them or their transportation to different parts is being done by the host's blood system itself blood vascular system is your doubt okay, clarified ah oh, yes ma'am thank you 
Okay. So almost four, uh, 2,000 species are present, five class, subclasses and 10 org orders. So example is monocystis and plasmodium and sarcocystis. So these are the uh, like the examples in the class porozoans. Now, when it comes to class ciliata or um, uh, what do you call it, class ciliata, or it's also known as infusoria. Let me see if at all I've got a picture. Yes, I think I have. Hmm. So this is the only class in the subphylum ciliophora. The most characteristic feature is the presence of cilia on the body surface. Hence the name ciliata. Now there is a very firm pellicle that is present, which is rigid in nature, and it is used for both locomotion as well as food capture. Now these animals, and you have a distinct mouth that is a cytostome present, a distinct uh, gullet that is a cytopharynx present, and then uh, the other free living um, sedentary or colonial, and some of them are parasites in nature. So this is one very famous example, paramecium. In fact, slipper animalcule, as it is known because of its shape, which is like that of a slipper. So if you get to see that highly developed protozoans and um, uh, mode of nutrition is holozoic in nature. And, uh, you know, you sometimes, you know, there are some bundles of cilia that are present. So what happens is they help in the formation of, like, you know, they help in filtering the food particles so that, you know, whatever, uh, uh, when they are exposed to the water current. So in other forms, what happens is the cilia in the cytosome and the cytopharynx create a water current. Then this causes filtration and only food is ingested inside. Now, there are two types of nuclei present. One is a large macronucleus. You can see a macronucleus. And you can see a micronucleus over here inside the picture. Micronucleus is kidney shaped. Micronucleus is soft, uh, so, uh, like, you know, small in nature. This macronucleus is uh, used for the vegetative activities, whereas the micronucleus participates in the sexual reproduction. And when you have transverse binary fission or budding, that is where, you know, asexual reproduction is by transverse binary fission. So binary fission is like transverse in nature, as you can see the line that's going through. And then you can see budding. Budding also takes place. And then sexual reproduction is by conjugation or autogamy and autogamy. Around 5,000 species are known. Four subclasses are present. 15 orders are present. Their classification is again based on the arrangement of cilia. So you have, you know, uh, lophotrichus, peritrichus, amphitrichus. So all these, you know, lophotrichus means only one side you have a tuft of flagella. Peritrichus means this is a peritrichus species. Peritrichus means you have flagella all over the body. See, this is only the longitudinal section that you're able to see. But that organism is something like a balloon which is longitudinal covered by uh, cilia all over the body. That is the easiest way we, where you, you can actually imagine paramecium. Water cella is something like an umbrella, like it's there in your textbook if you can see. You know, the figure B, in fact, figure 2.5A is paramecium, figure 2.5B is water cella. So that's what. And then so you have a micronucleus, micronucleus, you have cilia, you have a pellicle, you have a small vestibule and a trichocyst and food vacuole, contractile vacuole, and you have a collar and a stalk in the case of vorticella. Now, we're going to have a look at the basic, uh, uh, so that's what, as I told you, trichosis is something which is used for protection. It is a rod-like uh, structure, which is oval also in nature. It can be discharged so as to strike the predators. So this is how it is. These are the, these are the cilia. These are the unexpelled trichosists. So nutrition again is through uh, oral groove or a cytostome. Then you have a cytopharynx or a gullet. And then you have some of them have even an anal pore, which is used for uh, removing the uh, like you know waste products. So this is how a vorticella is there. And this is we are talking about the food, how uh, food is being taken in and food residues being ejected out. This is the food vacuole. This is the co contractile vacuole, which is getting emptied. It comes 
uh, it is getting filled, it is getting emptied over here. These are the trichosis, this is the gullet. Madam, explain again, madam. Okay. See, over here, this is just, it is only for your understanding, basically. This is wherein, you know, the food vacuole is filled up. Whatever waste is there, it is getting excreted out. Once this food vacuole goes to the, uh, what do you call it, plasma membrane and towards the pellicle. And that is how, and it forms that opening and all the food residue or the waste is being ejected out. Over here also the contractile vacuole in the same way over here it is getting filled up becoming big and then later once all of basically it is for excretory purpose. And this is the macronucleus and the micronucleus and you have trichosis over here. So and this one only they have magnified the picture over here. So how a basal body of the cilium looks like this is the cilium pore that comes. If you go into detail, I think in your intermediate, you must have had the cilium and the flagellar arrangement, 9 plus 2 arrangement. With all the axoneme and then uh, like, you know, um, uh, the 9 plus 2 flagellar <clears throat> arrangement, in fact. Anyway, so now, right now, I'm not going into the details because as it is, you know, you do not have all the, uh, the locomotion as such. So... When it comes to the cilia, they have micronuclei, micronuclei, micronuclei is a, a polyploid in nature and micronucleus is for uh, sexual reproduction. Cilia can reproduce asexually by transverse binary fission and by budding and sexually by conjugation. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll come to the conjugation in a little while. Basically, let the slide be as it is. So, uh, uh, like, you know, if you see in conjugation as such, opposite uh, mating types, that is conjugates come together, there is a, it results in a production of four haploid pronuclei. So, three of the three pronuclei and a macronucleus completely degenerate. And then you have even uh, mitosis occurring after the meiosis. And meiosis is reproduction of the gametes. Mitosis is division of the cytoplasm. Mm -hmm. And then the conjugates separate. There is exchange of the pronuclei also taking place. After the conjugates separate, you have nuclear divisions so that the nuclear characteristics and the ploidy of the species is maintained. And then again, you have a cytoplasmic division. So partners join up, join together with the oral depression. And then cytoplasmic fusion takes place. Then the micronucleus undergoes the meiosis. And then after the micronucleus uh, undergoes the meiosis, I request you all to please mute yourselves. So after the fusion of the cytoplasm, you have uh, uh, like, you know, again, division of it. And then the ploidy is maintained. So now let me come to Elphidium or Polystemella. Phylum is Protozoa, subphylum is Plasmodroma, class Sarcodina. Order is Foraminifera, Elphidium or Polystemella. And uh, it belongs to the order Foraminifera, wherein forar means pores, bear means to bear. The shells are perforated by minute pores. Habit, uh, it is a marine uh, organism and it is occurring up to a depth of around uh, 550 to 600 meters. It's also found in the brackish waters and it's a free living organism. Moves along the sands, seaweed, debris on the seafloor basically. And then it's a minute organism which is visible to the naked eye. Under the microscope, it appears like a miniature seashell. And its uh, vacuole is also... Uh, just a second, please. I'll have to show this picture. Itself. So there's a vacuole basically and uh, there's a viscous granular protoplasm present and there's a distinct ectoplasm that is not present. Contractile vacuole is not present in these animals. 
and elphidium shows dimorphism that is there are two distinct forms one is a microspheric form and one is a megalospheric form differences exhibited are like this that the microspheric form see this is the megalospheric form this is the microspheric form so this is uh, this is a uh, uh, less abundant in fact whereas and it is smaller in size it is uh, having you know multinucleated uh, 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 it is a multinucleated structure and there's an initial chamber which is known as a proloculum which is small it reproduces asexually by multiple fission this is the megalospheric form it's abundant in number larger uninucleated single nucleus is large proloculum is also large this first chamber is known as proloculum and this rep reproduces sexually by isogamy right now there is a shell also it's got a shell on to it so which is hard biconvex means like this biconvex means both the sides are bulging out and it can be oval or spherical also in shape pale yellow in color and it surrounds the protoplasm so protoplasm is surrounded by this shell and this shell is made up of calcium or cal uh, calcium carbonate so it is known as a calcareous shell and it also has organic and inorganic substances the shell is multilocular that is many chambered as you can see these are the different chambers that are present and each chamber is v shaped see you can see the v shape and it is separated by septa and these septa have holes and perforation so what happens is the central uh, through which protoplasm keeps flowing around and you also have uh, the central part of the shell which is known as umbo and the peripheral part which is known as the keel this peripheral part is known as the keel are you able to see my uh, cursor yes ma'am Oh, done. So, cytoplasm inside the protoplasm, uh, it's the cytoplasm. In fact, shell chambers in el elphidium are filled with this particular part inside. They are filled with cytoplasm. So, again, they flow through all the because it has got a lot of uh, perforations. Cytoplasm and the protoplasm keeps flowing through all the chambers of the cell. And uh, then there is this uh, ectoplasm and endoplasm. The cytoplasm itself is divided into uh, outer ectoplasm and inner endoplasm. This shows streaming movements and the streaming movement is known as cyclosis. And in elphidium, uh, see that's what, no? If you see, these are the outer chamber, like, you know, these are the chambers. They have got perforations in the middle and this cytoplasm whatever is there it is divided it is known as or distinguished as outer ectoplasm inner endoplasm it is all the same but the ecto and the endo just you know a re release of water molecules in and out what happens is they become either thick or a little more uh, thin so because of which this kind of movement and interchanging uh, movements you can call it as uh, there is a streaming movement as well which is known as cyclosis and in elphidium the cytoplasm also has organelles such as the mitochondria the ribosomes the golgi complex endoplasmic reticulum etc and the number of the nuclei in the elphidium also varies depending upon the whether it is the uh, megalospheric form or the microspheric form so the microspheric form is multinucleated, whereas the megalospheric form has only one nucleus and uh, no special excretory organelles are present as such. And the excretory products are diffused through the general body surfaces. Now, when it comes to the pseudopodia, the long slender branching and they form a network like pseudopodia, which is known as the reticulopodia or the mixopodia. And this is used for both locomotion as well as food capture. Now, when it comes to nutrition or the mode of feeding, basically you get to see that the pseudopodia goes onto a, and they have a sticky surface. So what happens is that is because of mucus. So food particles that are present in the water currents get stuck to the pseudopodium because of its sticky nature. And then digestive enzymes are present in the mucus layer itself. These help in the food digestion. This process completely occurs outside the shell. 
because it is over here as you see the pseudopodium that is going to be formed and you have a mucus layer with the digestive enzymes so digestion is occurring outside the shell altogether then what happens is the nutrients after it, they get digested they come into the uh, like you know uh, uh, the reticular uh, like you know what do you call it into the cell or into the uh, like you know alphidium by diffusion with the help of the endoplasm in the reticulopodia then they are get circulated within the rest of the cell this is what happens so when it comes to respiration and excretion respiration is by a simple diffusion of gases into and out of the cell similarly nitrogenous excretory material mostly in the form of ammonia diffuses out of the cell now when it comes to reproduction and life cycle you get to see that both the asexual and the sexual reproduction take place asexual is by multiple fission in the microspheric individual and uh, this microspheric individual is known as an agamont or a schizont sexual reproduction takes place or occurs in the megalosporic uh, individual or the gamont So in the asexual form, what happens is the microspheric form, whatever is there, which has already multinucleated, it undergoes multiple fissions or schizogony. Entire cytoplasm flows out of the shell and forms a halo around the empty shell. Nuclei break up into chromatin bodies, which reorganize to form new nuclei. Now, a bit of the cytoplasm surrounds each nucleus, forming minute amoeboid cells, which are known as amoebulae or agametes. Now, they detach from the parent cell. Then uh, what happens is they secrete a shell around themselves so that they become this megalosporic individuals. So the microscopic form undergo multiple fissions or schizogony. They form amoebulae or agametes. Then they detach themselves from the parent cell. Then they what, what happens is then they uh, form the megalosporic individuals. The first chamber of the shell becomes the prolocular and uh, of the megalospheric form. Mm -hmm. Now, once the growth continues, but what happens is... I request you all to mute yourselves. <clears throat> so, once the growth of this megalospheric form continues, uh, you also have that addition of the new chambers, basically. So that, you know, and then the nucleus migrates from one chamber to another, finally settles in the middle chambers, somewhere in the middle. Now the amoebulae grow into a fully formed, uninucleated, large megalosporic adults. In other words, the, this microspheric form gives rise to the megalosporic form by asexual reproduction. Now, when it comes to sexual reproduction, this megalosporic form, what is there? Megalospheric form, this reproduces sexually by gamon. This will produce the microspheric form. Okay. So over here, what happens is this nucleus, whatever is there, it breaks down mitotically into many nuclei within the, uh, and the cytoplasm also breaks into small fragments. One piece of cytoplasm surrounds one nucleus and then what happens is this acquires a pair of flagella. Now these are known as gametes or zoospores or flagellulae. All the gametes are similar in shape, structure, so they are known as isogametes or zoospores. Now the isogametes escape into the water through the pores of the or the foramen of the parent shell. They freely swim in the water with the help of a paired flagella. Then they become slightly elongated in nature. Then the haploid gametes of different parent cells or megalospheric forms lose the flagella and then they unite and fuse to form a diploid zygote. So this phenomenon is called as isogamy. Each zygote secretes a shell around itself and then becomes a young microspheric individual. New chambers are going on added. And then the nucleus divides initially by meiosis, that is reduction division. And then by simple mitosis to produce uh, uh, several haploid nuclei, 
and one adult microspheric individual or a schizon this one so the formation of the microspheric form takes place by sexual reproduction of the megalospheric form so this megalospheric form divides single nuclei cytoplasm flagella released into the water they meet other uh, like you know same uh, like you know nuclei from other uh, individuals they lose the flagellum fuse fuse together isogamy then you have again meiosis taking place within the uh, like you know uh, diploid nature a uh, diploid uh, a zygote because of which you get many haploid or uh, the production of the microspheric uh, 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 individual is it clear so far yes ma'am राइट सो दैट इज द रीजन वाई द मोड ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इन एलफीडियम इज क्वाइट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अदर एनिमल्स so what's happening is in other animals the cells are diploid meiotic uh, division occurs at the time of gamete formation itself and this diploid zygote undergoes several mitotic divisions this gives rise to a diploid adult so you have diploid haploid diploid diploid haploid diploid over here in elfidium meiotic division occurs in the zygote itself so two end to half that is n so a haploid adult is produced now again no meiotic division is taking place during the gamete formation in elfidium but gametes are produced by mitosis again so what happens is there's an alternation of generation so life cycle can be defined uh, uh, with the what you call it alternations of generations in elfidium microspheric individual whatever is present this is the asexual generation of the schizont and the megaspheric individual represents the sexual generation of the gamete so microscope uh, scopic or microspheric form reproduces asexually to produce the megalospheric form now this megalospheric form reproduces sexually to give rise to the microspheric form so there is an alternation of generation over here so and this takes place in about 2 years that is the time you are looking at so they have given that particular uh, life cycle picture in your textbook basically you can just have a look at it now what i'm going to do is i'm going to look into leishmania hopefully i'll try to finish if you, if you can give me 10 minutes more of your time maybe we can try to finish a little bit of our i don't want to uh, continue or you know take it into the next class so let us just see how it is going to take place i'll try to teach a little fast right. so this please give me a minute so when it comes to the protozoan diseases you can see that the first one is the leishmania donovani which causes kala azar so phylum protozoa sub phylum plasmodroma class mastigophora sub class zoomastigophora order protomonadina genus is leishmania species is donovani so it was named this particular organism protozoan was named after the uh, discoverer who are they leishman and donovan so both reported the organism in almost just in a difference of a few months so leishman he had reported it from london and donovan from chennai that is on madras in july 1903 and uh, in uh, like you know uh, leishman in may 1903 so almost similar like simultaneously so this causes kalazar or dumdum fever or visceral leishmaniasis and it is quite seen uh, like you know quite uh, uh, what do you call it uh, popular or quite seen a uh, common in india eastern asia parts of africa and south america 
then uh, what do you call it kalas are had been a problem especially uh, in uh, parts of assam west bengal bihar then eastern districts of up tripura uh, then orissa and all that especially in india they live in the endothelial cells and uh, that is uh, you know especially they live within the cell not in between the tissues basically they are intracellular parasites especially abundant in uh, liver spleen bone marrow and uh, this is uh, uh, like you know they are generally present in the leukocytes of blood spleen liver lymphatic glands and bone marrow they are also found in cats and dogs which act as normal or reservoir host now it exists in two stages leishmania form that is a mastigot stage and leptomonad form which is the pro mastigot stage so this is the two different forms that are present and the host for this is man and sand fly phlebotomus argentatus is the sand fly so the leishmania form or the a flagellar form as you can see over here it is a uh, microscopic in nature it is round or oval measuring around 2 to 4 microns then the body is surrounded by a pellicle cytoplasm is not differentiated in an, into an outer ectoplasm and an inner endoplasm and it has a spherical nucleus which is placed eccentrically and then there is a flagellum that is absent in the bodies but when it ruptures it gives to a flagellum such as a blepharoplast or a paraplacial body and a rhizoplast so in this stage the parasite is present in the reticular endothelial cells of the vertebrate hosts and this divides by binary fission till the cell gets packed with these parasites so what happens is within the cell within the reticular endothelial cell itself there is a lot of bar, uh, bacterial fission that takes place binary fission takes place because of which a lot of daughter cells are formed inside that it's uh, inside the host cell blood cell tissue cell spleen cell whatever it is a reticular endothelial cell then it bursts open so as many as 50 to 200 or even more can be found in the infected cell of the host they attack the fresh cells and repeat the cycle of multiplication or they are taken up by the sand fly now this is the life cycle basically if you see so it is a digenetic uh, parasite that is and this is the pro mastic coat or the flagellar form we'll come back to it later so it is a digenetic uh, parasite having two hosts one is the uh, leishmania like you know sorry what do you call it uh, the man and then you have uh, um, the sand fly that is phlebotomus argentinus yes this is how it is so when it comes to the life cycle in the sand fly these as you can see over here in this picture it is a secondary or the intermediary host and man is the primary host and the and the uh, like you know so reproduction occurs only by binary fission in the secondary host basically that is the uh, phlebotomus argentatus so when it comes to the life cycle in the sand fly you can get to see that um the parasites along with the blood from the infected patient enter into the elementary canal of the sand fly it takes up the blood and the promastigot stage then they go into the gut or the elementary canal into the sand fly once they go over there it gets transformed into the mastigot uh, stage that is the flagella stage and then this is ingested by the parasitic cell and then again once again the sand fly with all these macrophages or amastigot forms they go back to the uh, human being again so this this is the leptomonad stage i'll just show you the leptomonad or flagellar stage or the promastigot form basically so the parasite grows becomes enlarged in the gut of the sand fly it is slender and uh, spindle shaped nucleus also becomes large short free flagellum develops from the blepharoplast or the basal granule flagellum does not curve around the body and also there is no undulating membrane that is present this parasitic form 
with a short free flagellum is known as a leptomonad. This is the infective stage of the parasite. Sandfly is not affected by the presence of the parasite in its body. When the sandfly bites another person, then this leptomonad or the flagellar stage goes into the bloodstream of man again. So in man, the life cycle, as you can see, I'll just show you the picture again. In man, since they are the primary hosts, the infection is that, you know, it is by inoculation. Parasite enters to the blood of the human beings and the leptomonad form changes into the adult leishmania stage. Then again, you have repeated binary fission, which gives rise to a large number of uh, parasites. So the incubation period, which is from the time of infection to the appearance of the disease symptoms is from three months to six months. Quite a lot of time, in fact. So you have something called as visceral leishmaniasis, which is known as Kala Azar. See, this is the kind of uh, uh, like, you know, pictures or what, what happens basically to the system, basically. So visceral leishmaniasis or Kala Azar is caused by leishmania donovani. And uh, symptoms, they primarily affect the liver, spleen, bone marrow, other viscera. So you have irregular fever, weight loss, reduction in WBCs. Then you have liver, spleen enlargement. Color turns black. That is why it's known as Kala Azar. Disease is usually fatal if it is not identified or treated. And you have a lot of lesions from large pimples to what do you call it? Uh, um, large pimples to large ulcers on the hands, feet, face. So this heals spontaneously after quite a number of months. But this will not appear until and unless there's a lot of time gap or until a lot of infection has uh, like, you know, already taken place since the initial uh, cutaneous lesion has healed. So how do you prevent from this uh, disease occurring or how do you prevent this? So again, as I told you, it can also see in a, uh, the reservoir host can be rodents, foxes, and dogs. This is the vector Flebutomus argentimus, and you have even Lazio Then you have different kinds of uh, that's what fever, spleen enlargement, lymphadenopathy or lymph nodes, then darkening of the skin that is Kalazar, com other complications, what are the prognosis, and again types, visceral leishmaniasis. So you have cutaneous leishmaniasis, all horrible, horrible pictures. But unfortunately, that is the people have suffered so much because of it. Now, how do you prefer? What is the profile axis? Profile axis, you can spray insecticides in the surroundings to eliminate the flies. Because end of the day, Phlebotomus argentipus is a sand fly. And then you have to eliminate the breeding uh, places such as the cracks, crevices in the buildings, then remove the shrubs, etc. And then, you know, you give proper medication also. Today, thanks to everything, we have proper medication also. These are the uh, biopsy. You can do this to find out whether it's there or not. And uh, there are no vaccines as such, but you can just give some anti-protozoal medicines that will help it. See, and these are the drugs that are, uh, some of them that are mentioned. So what happens is, this will help prevent the leishmaniasis to uh, occur. Uh, at least this will uh, treat the medicine. It will not prevent. We do not have a vaccine for it. So specific therapy again. So this is all about leishmaniasis. Now let us see about entamoeba histolytica. Uh, do you have a group as such, WhatsApp group or something within your uh, thing? Any of you can answer, actually. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. So, official WhatsApp group yes, or yes, something? Yes, ma'am. You do have? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We have. If you we have, have, please see to that. If you can, you know, you can. Uh, uh, this is my number. If somebody can add me or something, I will, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Yes, tell me, ma'am. Yes, this is the number. You can add me so that I can share this particular slide. And I will have to tell you one thing that is 7674. 
madam sir just a minute ma'am so this is my telephone number you a mobile number i mean you can add and uh, then what do you call it uh, i can share this particular slide in but it is only for okay, you to okay, just understand but it does not mean that you know these are the notes you'll have to prepare your notes and okay. whatever exam papers that are there they are going to be there in the university please go there you will find the question papers also regarding the previous years all right so now what i'm going to do okay, is amoeba histolytica plasmodium and trypanosoma i will have to continue in the next class all right okay. i'll end the class today right now okay my name is pranati okay ओके मैम ऑलराइट ओके मैम आई एम गोइंग टू एंड द सेशन टुडे आई विल ऐड यू नाउ ऑलराइट थैंक यू सो मच या आई विल ट्राई टू सेंड दिस मे बी आफ्टर वी फिनिश द नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके आफ्टर वी फिनिश दिस टॉपिक ऑलराइट देन थैंक यू सो मच हैव अ नाइस डे थैंक यू मैम ठीक है या ओके मैम थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू मैम इपड़ ग्रूप मैडम पे